Welcome back to Boss Up. I'm Nicole Jones, and we are here to teach you about how to start, grow, and sustain your business. I am back with episode two with Brandon Williams. Thank you for being here. Glad to be here. Thank <laughs> you so much for uh, enjoying the last episode, and I'm really I mean, happy to be continuing this. You gave a wealth of information in terms of your start in the actual industry, mm -hmm. making a pivot in the industry to work with the Steve Harvey Global Network, and just essentially your true feelings in that process, like sure. what that process felt like, some of the struggles that you were going through, and how you actually overcame some of those those things. So Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that information. I, I appreciate you being so open and candid with that. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that the reality is real is what people want. I, You know, I could, could tell you a made up story, but the reality is what's most important because especially in today's age, people pretend that like everything is perfect. Yep. It's what, you know, social media is amazing and great for all the wealth of information it provides. But one of the things that it does to hinder us is that people only put their highlights up. Mm, yeah. And folks don't understand, and especially our younger people, it's not a microwave, right? <laughs> like, I mean, we got things like Instagram yeah. now. We got reels. Yeah. When you say highlights, we yeah. have highlights Everybody, on Everybody, well, like, so. puts the right makeup <laughs> on and turns in the mirror a certain it's way. It's all about the and, angles. And, but that's not life. <laughs> yeah. Life has... You're sitting down and your stomach's showing a little bit mm -hmm. and your yeah, hair isn't right, right and, <laughs> you know, your teeth didn't turn out right with the light. Yeah. That's life. And so if I don't tell that, then that's just, it's not genuine to folks that are listening and thinking that there's perfection. I mean, one of the things that I talked about in the last episode is, like, give yourself some grace and your business some grace, your personal life some grace because it isn't perfect. And the folks that you think are perfect – they're not. I can I can promise you that um, from, you know, living my life and seeing what I've seen. It ain't perfect. Mm -hmm. And they struggle just like you and I. And when they were starting their businesses, they struggled just like you and I. You just don't know about mm -hmm. it. And so mm -hmm. my whole point is to explain to people that, yes, there are struggles. It's tough. It's hard. Um, and that's what you have to fight through to make sure that you understand just because it's hard doesn't mean it's not the right way to go. That it's challenging. Like everybody's trying to be successful. Yeah. And yeah. you know, just understand that like it ain't always gonna be easy. Um, it ain't always gonna be like this smooth sailing and there's no choppy water. Sometimes it, it is challenging and it is difficult. So I think that's a, a takeaway for anybody that's on the journey of whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you're an entrepreneur, as I would say. Mm. Um, where you're working inside of an organization and you're trying to build out your own business um, is challenging. You guys, do yourself a favor. He's giving you the cliff notes right now, what we just talked about in episode one. Be sure to check out the first episode with Brandon. We talked more details about this. So I'm, I'm glad we were able to just get you guys up to speed on what we talked about in the last episode. Sure. For this one, let's kick it off. More business tips for yeah. the business owners out there. Sure. What are the top three I'm going to try to keep it at top three because I'm sure yeah. there's many others. Yeah. The top three business requirements that businesses need to put in place when it comes to legal documents. You let so us know. So I think the first one that everyone has is, is you've got to decide what your business is. There are so many people that have ideas that might be a hobby. They might do it at night um, after their nine to five, mm -hmm. which is all fine and dandy, but you've got to turn that thing into a real business. And the first way to do that is you've got to think, am I really trying to set this up so that it's a business that exists? Or is this just like something that I do for the fun of it, right? Like, do I just make chicken out of my house and I sell it to the neighbors, right? Or do I want to have a chicken business, right? Like that I make chicken sandwiches that rival Chick-fil-A. Or a franchise. Or a franchise, you know? right? So the first thing you have to decide is kind of that. The second thing you've got to do with your business is you have to register a company or a corporation, right? And the reason you've got to register is because that's what's recognized at the state level, right? So you'll go to the Georgia Secretary of State, for instance, and you'll see a company that, you know, whatever your company is, and you go on and you look and it's got a registration number. It's got an address associated with it. It has a registered agent, which means somebody can contact that person. 
that provides validity on so many different levels, right? So when you have letterhead or you have an envelope and it, it's like my business is Brandon R. Williams LLC and I can operate that way. In addition to that, the second thing is I get to open a bank account. The way you open a bank account is very different. So to open a bank account in any place that you go for a business, one, it has to be registered at the Secretary of State level. Two, you have to get what's called an EIN. It's an Employment Identification Number. And that is done through a federal scenario, which is the IRS. I think everybody here knows who the IRS is. And so what that is, it's almost a, tr it's basically your company's social, social security number, right? And so it's the how you identify. It's like when you go into the bank, they're gonna say, okay, I need your registration papers, which is a certificate of organization, a certificate of incorporation, your bylaws, and then they're gonna also ask you secondarily for your EIN. Well, again, validity. Mm -hmm. If you think you have a business, you gotta have a bank account, right? Like how are people going to pay you? How are people going to send you money? Okay, so people say, oh, I can get paid through PayPal. I can get paid through Cash, Cash App. App. Yeah. Well, they're getting ready to start regulating that too. So it's not gonna be just as simple as like, oh, okay, well, I'll just do those, which when they start regulating them, they're gonna tie them to something. Again, it's same how you know when you get your passport, it says well, you gotta put your social security number in there. That's your business's social security number. It's your EIN. That is how you operate. That is how you do anything. That is how you pay taxes. So again, you can't start a business if you don't plan to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. So that's the second thing. The third thing that I would say is, you know, and this one is, is a little bit of a, a, a nod to a professional, hire professionals. Some people say, well, I don't have the money. There's some level of a lawyer that you know, an accountant that you know. And just talk to them about what you're trying to do. Again, I'm all about validity, right? Like if you're serious about this thing, if you've taken the time to register and or seek out an EIN and or you should be talking to somebody that looks like me or sounds like me. You might not be able to afford just me, but there's all ranges of lawyers. There's all ranges of accountants. But again, the purpose of this is you want to do things right from the day one. Those are three things, and those are like basic things. That, And when I say basic, not because they're like so simple and like everyone knows them. I say it because if you legitimately are trying to start a business, you need all three, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah, you can go and like, all right, well, I got, you know, I'm selling records out of my back of my trunk. That's not, I'm not saying it's not a business. Master P started a, like an a empire off of that. So you start where you start, but then you will get to a point. I gotta have a company, right? Like once you've sold all the like, you know, cakes to the neighbors and you're trying to expand it, okay, well, how are you gonna start something? If you try to go get a lease, you know what they're gonna ask you for? Where's your certificate of organization? Where's your EIN? Who's signing the lease? Who's the guarantor? If you don't have those things, you can't go get no space, yeah. right? So when I say those are kind of the foundational points, you got to get there. But those are the things that when the world wants to know, are you a legitimate business? Those are the important things that I think you have to start with. I think that's super helpful. I think a lot of people, you know, depending on where you are in your business, I think those are definitely the foundational pieces that you have to be able to start. You yeah. need those as validity to yeah. your business. Yes. You can't go any further if you're trying to be a serious business. Otherwise, you got a hobby. You got a hobby. Yeah. And you can't put on your taxes. Yeah. All that money was just out the window. Yep. And you can't get Absolutely. that back. Yeah. So I uh, appreciate you for sharing that because that's going to be super helpful for someone. And for sure. we, we rattle off a, a lot of acronyms, you know, <laughs> a lot of different documents that needed to get done. But these are fairly simple documents that you can get literally online. Yeah. You, you don't have to go into the offices. You can actually do them online depending on what state you're in. And, and listen, yeah. I would say to everyone, again, not a knock against professionals, but the way that this has been democratized with like a legal Zoom or legal Zoom essentially is like a, a law firm for especially for things like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can get on legal Zoom right now, start a company. And they have people that will help you. Now, they're not going to provide you legal advice. But if you did a little bit of research and said, hey, I want to start a company in Virginia, 
they would help you start the company, you provide the name. It's like going online and applying for a bank application. It, it's, it's almost that simple. So for people to say, oh, I don't know how to do it, or I'm, there's so many resources now that didn't exist 20 years ago um, that allow you to have these things. You, you, maybe you can't afford a me. Mm -hmm. You can go on LegalZoom. You can go on the Secretary of State and like, okay, well, how much this costs? Most people now, they've got lawyers in their family. Mm -hmm. They got somebody <laughs> connected to them. They've got an accountant somewhere. They can at least ask, how, would, how can I do this? How can I start this? I get calls all the time. And in my, I'm not even charging people. They ask me a question. I'm like, well, this is what you would do. Here's how you would do it. There you go. And I point them in the right direction. It doesn't, I'm not doing it because I need something from it. It's just I want to see people be successful. And for what, if you're really trying to, to start a business and grow a business, those are some things that you just have to have. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Every discipline starts with creating a habit. Find a plan that works for you. I know you can put a reminder in your phone, call so-and-so in 30 days. You can't use the excuse that, oh, I'm not, I'm an introvert, or I'm an extrovert, introvert, you know, stuff people like to say, nah, if you're not outgoing, right, you better get going, because that's the only way networking works. Freedom, it's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. We've gotten to the place where we started the foundational pieces. They're in place. We're solidified. Yeah. We're good now. Yeah. Now let's talk about the funding piece. Yeah. You have worked with a lot of different companies. You've secured a lot of mergers and acquisitions. Yeah. Uh, in the last episode, we talked about, I think it's over $100 billion plus that yeah. you've worked on within any given company. Yeah. How then do entrepreneurs be able to secure that level of funding, grants, what have you, or work with someone like you to help secure something like yeah, that? Yeah, so I, I think that there's... You know, what a lot of people start with, and you'll hear people say this or they'll throw it out, is kind of like friends and family, right? Yeah. And in a lot of worlds, the businesses, the first funders are people you know, right? You, you tell someone, hey, mom, dad, uncle, aunt, cousin, brother, I got this great idea, and I need $5,000 to start it, right? Whatever. Um, and the first set of money will come from that. And it might be $5,000 just to get it kicked off and get the thing started. It's because what most people, when they say funders, the first question a lot of times financiers or people that like invest, like, how much money do you have in it? Like, and the, the reason for that is how committed to this idea are you, right. right? I know you're working at it, but do you have any money in it? Do you have, yes, yeah, so you got some equity in terms of sweat equity. Hey, man, I poured all of my savings in this, $27,000. Yeah. Okay, then that means, that tells me you're super serious about mm -hmm. it, right? And then you gotta start growing with some revenue, right? You, got, you gotta be making some sales or providing some services that people will pay for. So 
when if you're not providing legitimate enough or enough of that, so you get five thousand dollars from mom and dad, and then you know, all right, well now we've got you know a hundred thousand dollars in revenue for the first year, and I'm selling X, Y, and Z, and then all of a sudden it's like after year one, maybe you're at two hundred fifty thousand, three hundred, four hundred thousand, and then there comes a point where it's like, okay, well maybe you go get some government money. It used to be called like SBA money. Right, like in the government now, you know, they've got different programs, certainly minority different programs, where you can become like 8A certified or you can become, you know, SBA certified so that maybe you're an African American woman who's got a business, there's money there. You know, traditional bank loans can be challenging. I think they also have COVID relief yeah. through SBA now Absolutely. too as well. So they've so. got, obviously in, in today's world where it's COVID and they've got things. And so you got, it takes steps to get to a point where you're looking at a third party, but those are the beginners, right? Like, okay, I gotta take some money for myself. I gotta go call a friend or a family to help me get started. And then I kind of start bootstrapping. And then it's like, okay, well, what grants, like you mentioned grants, what other programs do the government offer that can provide me $250,000 or $350,000 to like get to that next stage? And then when the sales get significant and then all of a sudden you're like, okay, well, we're at 500000 or $750,000. And then you can justify going to somebody and saying, hey, we're almost at a million dollars in revenue, but we need X amount so that we can quadruple that. So you have to make a case for it. What would the money do? Like, okay, well, if I gave you half a million dollars, one, what would you do? What would you use those funds for? Mm -hmm. Two, what is that going to do and how am I going to get my money back? Is it equity, which means it's not a loan, which means I'm buying part of your company. Mm. Is it a loan, mm. right? And then what are the repayment terms, right? So some people may say, well, all right, I'll give you half a million dollars, but I want 75% of your company. This is what happens on Shark Tank. So yeah. you, you'll see yeah. the back and forth, and there's one person that says, hey, I'm willing for that idea. I'm willing to give you $250,000, but I want 30% of your company. Are you willing to do that? Are, are you okay with that? And you heard, you'll hear them on the show, well, what are your sales? Oh, we have you know, $500,000 in revenue from 2020. Mm -hmm. And they're asking those things because that's what's important. They're asking it because how do you justify me giving you my money, right? Like, am I getting it back in six months plus 10%? Am I getting 30% of your company so I'm taking a gamble that your idea is going to work? And then what is that 30%? So if I, you know, f for example, I, I just read about Sarah Blakely selling Spanx or selling yes. a majority interest in Spanx. And I think she said she started like $10,000, maybe less. And she bootstrapped. She probably got that first, in, you know, capital from either herself. Yep. She went to some friends and borrowed it or said, hey, I'll give you 5% of my company if you give me $10,000. And she just had an idea. And out she of just, her garage. Out of her garage. <laughs> and she just worked and worked and worked and worked. And that's what it is. That's the process. And I'm sure at some point along the way it went from, yeah, I got some friends and family. To, she took on an investor. And that investor might have given her a couple million dollars. And then she got more money because the company was growing. And then she demonstrated, hey, if I get $5 million from you, I can increase my revenues by you know, 2.5, right? And that's a cool bet, all right? You were just in Saks, and now not only gonna be in Saks, you can go to, you know, Macy's. You can take your product to China. Like, that's what people wanna know. And like, what am I making a bet on? If you're just like, oh, look, I just need some money to put in my pocket, well, they're likely gonna say, yeah. no, I wanna <laughs> know what you're doing with it. I wanna know how you're going to use it. And what is this money going to do to help you grow? And how is your business going to scale? It can't just be one-sided no. vision where no. it's all within your friends and family network. Correct. It has to be able to scale as well. Absolutely. There's something that I read that you also not only do in help with negotiations with deals domestically, but internationally. Yeah. So that kind of speaks to what you were just alluding to with you know making deals in China and so forth. What you just shared, does that change if you also want to get funding internationally? So I don't think so. I mean, I think business is business, right? Like, yeah, the, the regulations and the norms may change, but 
people who fund in Africa or the Middle East are no different than people that fund in America. Right? They, they want to see the same, they ask the same types of questions. Um, they want to know, like, well, what are you doing to demonstrate or present or show or whatever? What are your revenues? What are you selling? What are you going to be doing in the next six months or the next year? I need to see what those numbers look like. Um, I need to know what it is you're generating, what it is that if I give you this money, one, how are you going to pay me back? What are you going to do to return my investment plus something else? Mm -hmm. um, business is business. Whether you're doing it here, the types of business may change. What's important to the finance year may change. But the reason people from the Middle East put money here because they want to make money too, right? So they're, they're no different. It just, again, the culture stuff is different, right, right. But, but not the business principles. They are, they are world-renowned world and defined. It doesn't matter whether you're in the city of Cincinnati or whether you're in Abidjan in, you know, somewhere in foreign. Right, right. That was a wealth of knowledge. Uh, I hope everybody who's at home was able to take some notes on this particular information, gather as much details as you can in terms of funding and what you should be looking for in terms of grants, how to work with domestic companies, even international companies. It sounds like that doesn't even really change. It's business is business, as we just heard. So be sure if you want to rewind and get some more of that information to figure out what do you actually need to implement in your business when it comes to funding. I know that's an all-time topic. Like the, It's a topic that never ends. Never How ended. can I fund my yeah. business? Well, you so. have to have money to make yeah. money. Yes. Like, so, I mean, it's, it's, an, it's a doesn't matter race, gender, creed, nationality, yeah. religion, you got to have money to make money. <laughs> and if you don't have anything that you're making money, you got to find a way to go get some money so that you can then build whatever you're trying to build. Yeah. So it is an age old question. It will continue to be one. And, you know, that's the reality of business. You have to have money to make money. I love that. I love that. Why do you think these men don't want to get married? It really depends on an individual's why we're getting married. A lot of the things that make a man good are kind of intangible. And his credit score shouldn't be the metric for what makes him good. This is the story of a boy who is very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Well, look, you might not be popular, but my favorite character is Celestial. Because <laughs> one of the one of the quotes that I wrote down in the book that kind of stood out to me was, "Love is the enemy of sound judgment." She seemed like a very needy woman, and I can't even respect Andre because how do you pray on your friend's wife while he's incarcerated? Like, you know, I just can't get with that. And maybe I got too invested in the book, you know. That's the cool. <laughs> <laughs> So we just heard you have to have money to make money. So let's go back to, that brings me to another topic about negotiations. How do you begin to make those negotiations with companies in terms of them want to actually invest in your business? Sure. I mean, it, it really, to me, like, I, I think it comes down to people, right? One of the things that I learned early on being just a pure lawyer is that people do business with people that they like. Now, again, there's doesn't always have to be the way. There are people that, like, do deals that hate each other. And it just makes sense from, you know. A financial standpoint. Yeah, financial yeah, sense. Yeah. It makes, you know, strategic sense. And they just do a deal together because it works. I tend to think that, like, you know, people want to do business with people that they respect, that they enjoy, they're cool with, they talk. And, again, this is partly why, you know, they, they talk about implicit bias and different things that happen. Yes, it's racial sometimes, but the reality is everyone does it, right? Like we all congregate 
to the people that we like, right? You walk in a room, you see a friend, you immediately go talk to that friend because it's comfort, right? So, yes, like when people are, you know, this CEO talks to that CEO and they're at the same country club, it's not always racial. It's who's in your circle, right? Yeah. So find a way to be in the circles where people that, like, provide money. Like, sometimes that means, hey, man, I got to be uncomfortable in an environment. I got to go where people that do deals are. And that might be at a country club. That might be, hey, at the Four Seasons. Or that might be at the St. Regis in Atlanta. Because that's where those people congregate. Yeah, they and have so, to go to breaking those barriers. Yeah. Very similar to the first episode where you mentioned, you know, you were out of your comfort zone. You yes. went from Atlanta, which you know well. It's in the fibers of your being at yes. this point. Yes. But you had to make that transition to yes. L.A. So being in those same type of rooms, being uncomfortable in spaces that Absolutely. you're not familiar with. And that's where I think the negotiations start. That's where you, you have to talk to these people for them to know who you are and what you do. Right. So your business is like this kind of hidden gem and you're generating five hundred thousand dollars a year and you've got a, a widget that you're selling and you want to take that business to five million dollars a year. They have to know about what it is. How are they going to know if you're not in the environments that they're in? And so find ways. It doesn't have to be you. Find a way that your lawyer is in those rooms. Find a way that your accountant is in those rooms. When I talked about that third level of like what's important, important foundationally, you might not be comfortable. You might say, I don't want to do it. I'm not comfortable going to wherever. Find someone who is. Find someone that's affiliated and connected to you that can be in those rooms and speak on your behalf and can say, hey, I represent X, Y, and Z. It's a great company. It's got a brilliant idea. It's got a wonderful CEO. And what they need is X, Y, and Z to get to the next level. I'd love an introduction. When can I meet them? And then that's how it happens. It's like you got to get yourself in the room and in the environments and be open to mm -hmm. being given that opportunity to pitch or to say, hey, I've got a great business and I need some money. How do I get to that next step? You're going to be in some rooms that maybe you're not always in. Maybe you haven't always been in. Find a way to get to those rooms and then start talking about yourself, talking about your company. Because what, what I've always said to people is what's important to people that are like supporting or, or going to support your business, they fall in love with like people. It's not the business. And when I used to like represent companies, it wasn't the idea or the company that interested me. It was the CEO. Mm -hmm. Because what I took a bet on is that whether this company works or not, that person is going to be successful. So that's what attracts people. Be energetic. Be like love what be passionate about what it is you do if you come into me and you talk about your company you're kind of sulking and like oh i mean i'm i just got this little business it's, it's doing okay <laughs> <This> little business <laughs> i yeah. i don't i don't i'm not drawn by that yeah. it almost doesn't matter what it is but if you come in lively and like you're excited and like what what's important when when i see now when people come to me and they're like excited about a show idea and they're excited about like some concept i may not even think it's that great but i'm like that person, right, right. This is they There's live this. They yeah. want this. This is important to them. So whether it's this idea or something else, I want to ride with them. And that's what I think people that lend money and what I said is like. Remember, I said it's like an energy thing, right? Like people want to be with people that like. What is it that attracts me to you? What is it that attracts me to your business? It's not just the idea. It's a bunch of people got business ideas every single day. You've seen them, you know them, you've, you've talked to them on this program. Yep. But what is it that makes you unique and your business unique because of you and it makes me want to support it, that makes me want to give? That, that to me, that's the start and the heart of negotiating. It's like I got to fall in love with the person that is leading it and we'll figure out the rest of it. And we really will. Um, you're not going to have all the answers. I'm not going to have all the answers, but we can find some people that will. I love that. That that brings me, and that's a good segue into my last question, in terms of the entertainment landscape. Sure. You've made this pivot 
from working in Austin and Bird, mm -hmm. now into entertainment law with Steve Harvey Global. Yeah. I'm sure you've gotten a lot of pitches, as you just mentioned, just some examples of people having sure. a widget or a new show concept. Yeah. What are you seeing in the indus entertainment industry where we can thrive as a black culture in that space? <laughs> I mean, and, and again, I don't think it's past, but certainly with like everything that happened in the pandemic and George Floyd and a variety of different things that happened kind of across the landscape of, you know, the world and certainly here, um, there's certainly been a moment of we have the ability to secure and to develop content. And I'm not saying that has changed. I think that what we have to do in the entertainment sector and what we really got to be cognizant of is bring great projects, right? Like at the end of the day, like I want, I want to see me and I want to see us, right? And so there's a lot more opportunity. You have the Issa Rays and the Michael B. Jordans and all these people that are starting these production companies and they're being supported, right? Like you have the shot with Lena Waithe and all the things that she's doing. So we're, we're getting opportunities that maybe in the past we haven't had. And so, but, but at the end of the day, there's still great projects. Insecure is a great show. Doesn't matter if it was white people. It's just a great show. Like, yes, it's comfortable for us because they it's rap and it's LA and it's but but it's just a great show. It's like friendship, it's pain, it's like fighting, it's this. Michael B. Jordan does good movies. Like Mercy was a good movie, right? So it isn't just it being black. It's is it good, right? Like at the end of the day, that is what I think we have to focus on. You're not just getting your project done because it's a black project. Is it good, right? Tell me, a, tell me a unique story. Tell me a dope story. I don't want to hear about, I mean, look, I love what 50 Cent's doing. I think, it's, I think it's amazing. But there's more to us than like drug dealers and like, there's more. Bring more. Like I'm, I'm fascinated by what he's done because it's, it's huge in terms of the viewership, but we got more stories to tell. Let's tell some great stories. So what I would tell folks that look like us and like want to get into the business it's like, go get great stuff. Tell me a great story that I haven't heard before. Give me something interesting. Doesn't have to be like so unique that we've never heard it because there's very few things that are just like, I've never heard of this. But at the end of the day, bring me something good. That's what's gonna like get us to whatever level that we want in terms of the entertainment sector. I mean, we've, we've got more exposure now than we've ever had mm -hmm. as a black people. Um, because of, again, the doors that have been opened by people, um, you know, and that's in every sector. That's not just the entertainment sector. It's law. It's medicine. It's just like we, we again, we started from behind, and now we're starting to catch up, and people start to see. They see a Black Panther, and they realize, like, the impact and effect. But you know what? Like, the Black Panther was just a great movie. Yes, it was a black movie, and we resonated, but white people resonated with it too. That's a great story. And so what, what my, you know, kind of final takeaway on that point is, is just like make great stuff, bring, bring unique and interesting concepts. And I think doesn't matter the audience, right? Like that, that's what's going to sell. That's what's going to be viewed, not just by us, but by other people. I can tell you if, if Insecure was only viewed by black people, it wouldn't be on. Right. There are other people like it, too. Right. Like there are other people that watch it as well. <laughs> and so while it's a it, you know, we get the opportunity to expand and show people other things about the culture. I think just keep making good stuff. That's what I tell people is make bring excellence to whatever sector that you're in and you will survive and thrive. So that's what I would say in terms of what do I see in the entertainment sector? How will it grow is doing great stuff and making great projects and bringing great concepts and we will see more of us on those yes, screens. Yes, I love that. That's beautiful and refreshing at the same time. There is more room for opportunity in the entertainment space. As you just heard, there's a wealth of opportunity. You can actually continue to build creative content, yeah. 
real content, content that actually, actually speaks to each one of us. So I'm excited to hear that. I'm sure those who are watching, who are, who's in that entertainment space, that you're excited too, because you're like, yes, my idea, I can go on it, I can pounce on it, and I can actually live it and breathe it, and, and it can actually, actually feed an audience. Absolutely. So. No, for sure. Brandon, thank you. No, thank you. I this appreciate was... you being here. Absolutely. This is a wealth of information, so we appreciate your time and just giving all this information, candid information to our audience. It's my pleasure, and, and again, I, I always like being on panels like this, Nicole, and, and mostly because there are people that probably haven't heard from folks that look like you and I or that come from the backgrounds that we come from. And I think, you know, for, for me, what I would say to folks that are listening, they're like, I... I don't know how to get, I'm no, I'm not special, right? Like I, I, I literally grew up in this environment and if you had told me when I was five years old that I'd be where I am, I would say, I don't know how, mm. I don't know where. And it doesn't mean an age thing. It doesn't mean that you can't start now where you are to get to a certain thing or get to where a level that you feel like you should, should be at, whether that's entertainment or, you know, law or medicine, like age is just so like restrictive but it doesn't have to be, right? Class doesn't have to be restricted. All of it is on the table. If you dream it and can think and it's in your heart, it's, it's, it's possible. And that's what people have to understand is like, there are no special people. Mm. Yeah, there's some people that are talented. There's some people, you're not gonna be 6'9 and 270 like LeBron James. That's just <laughs> physical, that's just God given. But you got other stuff that's your God-given ability. And if you seize upon that and understand that like the opportunities are there, we can make the best of them no matter what it is. And we can go from, you know, Chapel Hill Elementary School to opening businesses in the Middle East within a generation. That. It's all possible. Yes, I love it. I received that one. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you guys for tuning in to Boss Up today with Brandon Williams. We super appreciate your time here. Make sure you catch on episode one if you're just catching in on this episode and you kind of cheated and heard this episode because we're <laughs> talking about funding, everything yeah. everybody wants to hear. Um, make sure you listen to episode one as well. Thank you guys for listening, tuning in. Make sure you share this with your friends and family, and we'll see you again. Thank you. Thank you.